And now let's go ahead and start getting into some backtesting. Okay, so first and foremost, what is a double top and a double bottom? All right, so we're gonna come up here, we're gonna draw this out. A double top and a double bottom looks a lot like this. So we have our initial, our initial move, all right? This is the initial extension. We have an extension. We have a retracement back down in to the original move. Let me kind of stretch this out a bit more. Okay, we have an, a retracement back down, back down in the opposite direction. And, now, and then we have another extension. This is what I, what I was talking about in the trade plan. This is what I have to see. This is a trend. When price breaks this level right here, okay? When price breaks this level, that is what I classify as a trend, okay? It's important to know that. All right, so this is what I need to see in order to see a trend. We have our initial high, initial low, and our new higher high. This is, an ex this is a trend in my book. Extension, retracement, extension. Now, the next part, we, we do this, we come up here, we, we, we test this price point, we get rejected, we come back and we do another retracement. Then we attempt to continue in the same direction, right up here, but we get rejected. Actually, I probably just should hit the hotkeys, shouldn't I, rather than keep going back and forth. Now we get rejected. This, so we had a price retest. This, this would be a price retest, right? So we have extension, retracement, extension, retracement, price retest, okay? And then we got rejected again. This is a double top. You see, you have two tops right here, two mountains, and this is the V, this is the valley, whatever you want to call it. And so this is a double top. As you, as you have clearly seen, they're not that accurate of a trading pattern, uh, you know, on one pad on one of the time frames and on one of the currency pairs, it was only like 30% accurate, but you can trade them. So th this is what a double top looks like. If you want to see it on the flip side, we have an extension, our initial low, initial lower high, or our initial high, a new lower low, so extension, retracement, extension, Another retracement, and look, we, 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 were, we retraced. In both circumstances, you would retrace back down into the previous structure that you created. Uh, uh, my mentor always taught me, look left, structure leaves clues, and he, he defined this as structure, and as the price came back in, it retested the structure point, and it would get rejected, thereby creating a double bottom right here. Okay, this is what a double bottom looks like. So this is a double top, this is a double bottom, all right? So a double bottom means that price came in, made a new high, a new lower, I mean a new lower low, retested or uh, retraced, retested this lower low, got rejected and bounced back the other direction, okay? Now, as you can clearly see, a double top is going to be bearish, okay? A double top is most likely going to be a bearish move. So, um, and that, yeah, most likely it would be, or a double bottom in c conversely would be bullish. So if it's, depending on the pattern, will define the direction. So if it's a double top, you're, the trade is going to be a bearish trade. Um, if it's a double bottom, it's going to be a bullish trade, okay? Now, the next thing that I would need to see in my strategy, like this, the if-then thought process, is that you need a break of the V. The V is right here. We need to break this. This would be the, the line that we would need to cross to break it, and we did right here. Same goes for this one, okay? So we break the structure. Now, what I need to see in order to take this trade is a 786 Fibonacci retracement, okay? So I'm going to draw my Fibonacci. So this is, um, let me, let me kind of go back here real quick. This is a Fibonacci retracement tool. It is a tool that allows us to measure the percentage of a move, but it's not like a flat 40, 20%, you know, it is a flat 50%. <clears throat> that is a Fibonacci ratio. 
but instead of it being 60%, it's 61.8%. Or instead of it being 70%, it's 78.6%. And there's no 80%. Uh, I Actually, I think there is something in the higher 80s, but there, there are a lot of different Fibonacci ratios. And psychologically speaking, traders seem to value these ratios for whatever reason. There seem to be value that is psychologically driven within these within these ratios. So, you know, you can utilize them. You don't want to base your trades totally and completely off of them. They're only tools to give you an idea. Sometimes you will see situations where the market will retest right at the 618 and then bounce right off. Sometimes that does happen. It's not necessarily enough to go basing a trade off of it. But And you don't ever want to do that. You want to have a series of things you need to see in order to take a trade. But it's something to consider, right? So this is what the Fibonacci retracement tool looks like. And basically, it just gives you an idea of where the market will retrace to and how to measure retracements to kind of try to predict market movement in a way. Now, you don't want to base, like I said before, you don't want to base a trading strategy completely off of this. Now, if you decide to do that, make sure you backtest your trading strategy so that you know whether or not your strategy has a positive expectancy. But in most cases, you probably don't want to purely base your trading strategy off of the Fibonacci retracement tool. You probably would want to use market movement and the Fibonacci retracement tool and a whole host of other things in order to create a trading strategy. But if you're going to base it totally off of the Fibonacci retracement tool, just make sure that you backtest that strategy. Don't put any money at risk in the market without backtesting your strategy. Oh, and actually, I kind of messed up here. So in reality, the, the trading plan talks about when you're using to measure the 786, what you want to see here is you don't want to measure the extension that ends up breaking the V. You want to measure the double top itself, okay? So per my trading rules, uh, my trading plan, you want to measure the actual size of the double top or the double bottom. And then if the market breaks the V, then you would wait to see a retracement back here into your 786 retracement level, okay? That's, uh, that's basically how you would do it. Now, there are other Fibonacci measurement tools that can be utilized to try and help predict market movement. Another tool that we can use is called the Fibonacci extension tool. And basically, unlike the Fibonacci retracement tool, where you more or less... You're just trying to figure out where the market will retrace to after it is already extended, okay? So we already had an extension here. Actually, let's go ahead and erase this one. We'll move this over here. We already extended here because look left, structure leaves clues, and we broke out above structure, and now we're trying to figure out where we are going to retrace to. Now here, as you can see, the 50% retrace Fibonacci retracement level lines up very nicely with this structure that we've created off to the left. When Fibonacci ratios line up with market movements or structure, it can also be called price action or whatever, basically we call that Fibonacci confluence. Okay, so we have Fib, we have the Fib confluence here, and this just means that there, there might be an increased chance of it bouncing off of the, Fib, the Fibonacci ratio and then rallying from there. Okay, that's all that means. But this is how we would generally use a Fibonacci retracement tool. We're not using it to see how far the market will extend past previous structure created. What we're looking for is we're looking to see where the market's going to retrace back into. And that's more or less what the Fibonacci retracement tool is used for. Now, the Fibonacci extension tool, on the other hand, is a little different. So what the Fibonacci extension tool is is that we're not really so much interested in the retracement. The, the retracement has already occurred. Now we want to see, we start to see that the, re, the market's going to go ahead and continue to fall from here, right? Or continue to rally from here. So what we might want to do is measure the previous, basically the previous leg of the move, all right? We're going to measure, we're going to go swing low to swing high and back down in. And we're going to see where the market may extend to and then reverse. 
Now, again, this is just a tool. You do not want to trade this with real money. If you were, if you want to create a trading strategy that only uses structure analysis and Fibonacci ratios, then go ahead and backtest that rule. My trading strategy, for example, only uses structure analysis and basically Fibonacci retracements. And there's really nothing wrong with that. You just need to backtest it and make sure that you have a positive expectancy. And again, you don't ever want to risk money in the market without backtesting a strategy, all right? Trust me, I've done it before in the past, and it's not something that I would advise anybody to do. When you take trades or when you put your money in, into a, a particular asset or something around those lines, and you haven't really tested or done any research on it, honestly, more than likely, you're going to lose money. I mean, there's a very, very high chance that you're going to lose money. I can speak from experience. So you always want to create a, strat a strategy via a trading plan and then test that strategy out. And it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time, but guys, it is so worth it. So that's what the Fibonacci retracement tool is, and that's more or less what it's used for. And that's the Fibonacci extension tool and what it's more or less used for. So that being said, let's go ahead and move on to how I handle my entries, exits, and targets with regards to how to trade this strategy. Now, I went ahead and I already drew on pretty much the exact same uh, structure that we had over there, the exact same price action movements and whatnot. And now I'm going to show you how I would go ahead and set up my entry, my exit, and my target. So per my trading strategy rules, I have to place my stop loss at minimum 10 pips above the highs or the lows of the pattern. Highs if it's a double top, and lows if it's a double bottom. So that's 10 pips. So if you look off to the far right here, you see it's 1.4053. So obviously we need 1.40639, okay? Well, six because I have the charts scrunched up so much so as to reduce the lines in the background, as you can see here, these boxes and whatnot, I decided to scrunch it up to kind of reduce those lines so that it, it looks a little better. Clearly, I can't do 10 pips because I've scrunched the charts up so much, but let's pretend that this right here is 10 pips. It's not that far. We're going we're gonna to highlight, we're going to color it red, and then what we're going to do is we're going to measure the overall pattern, okay? Swing high to swing low, that's what you, we normally call, that's what my mentor always did when he was drawn on Fibonacci measurement tools. And we're going to enter right here at the 786 retracement level. And we're going to color this, we're going to make this yellow, right there, perfect. And then we're going to put our target at the extension that basically broke the V of the pattern. Okay, and we're going to do that lime green just because it's a very nice color. Looks good. Okay, so red, yellow, green. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll turn this purple because I want you guys to be able to see this pretty well, and uh, you might struggle to see it if it's if it's yellow. Okay, so we have the purple is our entry, the red is our stop loss, and the green is our target. Now, in this strategy, I don't really do two, three targets. There are strategies out there that you can utilize that can do multiple targets, and that's fine if that's what you want to do. I don't really do that at all. I just, you know, at least not for this strategy. This strategy, I only want to see it hit the first target and just go from there. Because once you get into secondary targets and things like that, then you need, then you probably would want to deal with, you know, rolling stops to where you entered so that if the market was to come back here, it, instead of the market doing this, let's, uh, let's say the market did this halfway between your your entry and your target and then the the market rallied so if you had a target two let's say down here because we got some structure here let's say this was target two whoops wrong one wrong hotkey and let's make this like a dark green dark olive green very disgusting looking green okay and let's so if the market had come down and hit target one all right, and was going past target one, and you basically, what you would effectively do from this point is you would roll stops to break even over here, 
Okay. Now, actually, you probably wouldn't want to move it a little bit above there, a little bit below the, your entry just to cover for commission fees and whatnot. And then the market would move back and you'd, you'd get stopped out for break even. But if you would only aim, so what you would have to do in your trading strategy is determine for yourself how consistently does target one get hit as opposed to target two. In many cases, you will find that target two doesn't hit nearly as often as target one does. And that ultimately, if you aim for target two, you're going to get a lot of break evens. You're going to have a lot of losses and a lot of break evens. And then more or less, it may very well reduce the profitability of the trading strategy. Whereas if you had just aimed for target one, okay, if you just aimed for target one, then, you know, it's not so bad after that. So that being said, this is basically what you want to do when you're looking for your entries targets and stop losses. And this is how you would ultimately look into it. So that's for a double top. Let's go ahead and show you what we would do here for the double bottom. So we see the double bottom. We see that we have a break in structure. First things first, let's go ahead and determine our stop loss. Again, let's assume that this is just automatically 10 pips. Now let's draw the fit, use the Fibonacci retracement tool. Now, because it's a stop loss, what we're going to do is we're going to swing low first. We're going to measure from the bottom of the pattern to the top. So it's swing low to swing high instead of swing high to swing low. And then we will put our entry right here at the 786. Again, we will make this purple or let's say dark violet. I like that. And then our target will be the end of the, of the extension that we created right here. So let's assume we start seeing this, you know, go ahead and start retracing here. Once we see that, we now know where we could potentially put our target. So we'll go ahead and put the target here, entry here, stop loss here, and then we just wait and see. Hopefully we get entered right here and we rally that point on and then we end up making money. That's I idealistically, that's what it would happen. Now, here's what tends to happen a lot more, more often than not is a, we get a retracement here and then we just rally off. We never really hit the entry point. So nothing happens or B, we just, you know, may, maybe we go up and down, up and down, but eventually we just, we hit the stop loss. So we get entered and we lose money. And more often than not, that happens probably around 60, 70% of the time. So a lot of people might be asking the question, why don't we just reverse it? Why don't we reverse this somehow and we make the stop loss, the target, and we enter, I don't know, maybe, you know, up here somewhere. Maybe we enter at the bottom of the V. So if it breaks the V and it comes back down in, then we, why don't we just do that? And we turn this into the, the actual stop loss. We turn this into our target down here or whatever. And now this is our opportunity. Okay, you could do that. There's really nothing wrong with flipping the strategy around. And I and honestly, I mean, there, there really isn't. What you probably could do is you could do something around this line, the, these lines. Okay, your 618. Let's make the 618 retracement of this extension move, let's make that the target. So we have to see a double bottom and then a retracement back into a 618 retracement. And then we would want to see it rally. But here's the problem. Now you're dealing with all different, a whole new world with regards to how the market's going to behave. Now you're saying, okay, instead of waiting for a third attempt to retest these price levels, and then move on. Let's now wait for it to break the V and then basically retrace in the opposite direction. So now you're dealing with a whole new world of statistics and things of that nature, which may not be a bad thing. Maybe the statistics are better. Obviously, double bo tops and double bottoms fail more often than they succeed. But how you trade it is going to change the consistency of your trading strategy. So if you want to flip the trading strategy, if you want to do something around those lines, that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure that if that's what you do, you write out a trading plan, 
you st- create a training journal and you start back testing it so that you can prove whether or not your training strategy has a positive expectance. Also, there's an- there's one more thing that I forgot to mention before, but what would happen if we come back up here and we start to retrace a little like this and then we rally like this. What, what would happen in this case? In this case, like I said at the beginning of all this, how we have an extension, a retracement, and then another extension, and that basically defines a trend. That I, That is what we need in order to identify a, a new trend in the market. We have right here another trend extension. We extended past these resistance levels, the structure, retracement, and then extension again. And that is basically the identification of another trend that, or a possibility of another trend and therefore invalidates the trade. So it's this little retracement right here and then the continuing on to invalidate the trade. You would not, at least per my trading rules, see the extension retracement and then wait for another retracement back down here. That's not what you would do. All right. Because at this point, if it retraced then, then you would need to go ahead and measure it up here, which if that's what you guys want to do, if you guys want to make a rule that says, you know, okay, if it happens, if I have a four point move, one, two, three, four, that if it's just an extension retracement extension, all right, if I get this three-point move, as long as it moves down from the three-point move after the initial retracement and then it, and then it rally or falls down into my entry and then hits target, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. Okay? you If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But just make sure that you test it. Another thing here, though, before we move on to actual data or historical data, one thing to note is is this so even though i know a lot of you will probably be like well that's not a very big stop loss you probably get stopped out all the time and you're probably right there is a little bit there is that risk of getting stopped out here but you are taking smaller risks compared compared to your targets i mean look at this i mean this is easily way over a one-to-one risk reward ratio where let's say you're risking ten dollars but you stand to make another $10. That is a one-to-one -one risk reward. Now, if you're risking 10 to make 30, that is a one-to-three risk reward. And if you can see right here, clearly, this is how much we're, we're risking. We've got this right here. This is how you can measure your risk, how much you're risking your risk reward ratio per, um, with regards to Ninja Trader 7. Now, if you're looking at TradingView or you're using another software, TradingView actually does has a, a thing that does an actual tool that does this for you, so you don't actually have to draw all this stuff in. It's just one of the reasons I love TradingView so much. Okay, so this is a bit more than a one, two, three and a half. Let's say this is three and a half. It's not quite three and a half, but... So this is a one to three and a half risk-reward ratio. So odds are you're probably going to end up losing more than you're winning. In my experience, what I have found is the higher risk reward rate, the better risk reward ratio you have, whether it's a one to four, one to five, one to three, it tends to not work as consistently as a one to one risk reward ratio does. It's not as consistent. Now, maybe your experience has been different, but in my experience, that that's what I've had. So generally speaking, the more, again, per my experience, the better risk reward ratio you have, sometimes it can make it your trading strategy less consistent. But that's not always the case. And uh, I think one of the main reasons for that is in order to have such a phenomenal risk reward ratio, I had to put my stop loss pretty darn close to my entry here. So as a result of this, I mean, obviously the stop loss is going to get hit a lot more often because it's so close. If you were to move it out here, you still have a better risk reward ratio, but now the market has to come down in a lot farther to stop you out. So it could do one of these things. It could break below the pattern 
and then rally higher. But you see, I don't necessarily like that because if it breaks below the pattern, the pattern has already been fulfilled and been invalidated. And odds are, if it closes below these two, this double price retest here, this double bottom, and basically, if the market already closed below the double bottom here, then more than likely, it's going to continue lower. It's not going to reverse. So that's why I don't really place my stop loss that far under the double bottom. Now, it is absolutely possible that it could break below and then rally again. Yeah, of course. I mean, these are the, this is the markets. Just about anything could happen, right? But, you know, I would, but I generally think that if we break below and we close below, it's going to continue, it's going to continue onwards and completely destroy your, uh, your trading opportunity. But, you know, that's just the way that it works. And it's important to take smaller risks than what you stand to make unless you have a strategy that is very, very, very consistent. If you have a strategy that has a high consistency and wins a lot more than it loses, then you might actually be able to make a, a trading strategy work where you tend to risk more than you tend to make, but you win so often that it actually works out in your favor. But again, that's all hearsay. It all depends on your testing.